A very good morning to everyone who is uh, joining us uh, in this online service. My name is uh, Brother El Indiao. I am born again, and uh, it is my joy and delight this morning to present God's Word to you. I want to begin by appreciating uh, Pastor Felix, who extended this invitation for me to come, 
and be able to share God's word this morning. And so welcome uh, as you join us this morning. I trust that the Lord will be able to bless us from where we are. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that you have given us this moment to listen to your word. And I want to commit myself as I share this, that Lord, this very words that I share will be the words that you want to use to encourage your people this morning. So we commit this time and pray that your spirit will lead and guide me in everything I will do and say, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Our subject this morning is while you are waiting, while you are waiting. And I want us to read the book of Isaiah chapter 40, verse number 31. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 31. From the New King James Version, it says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 31. One of the most challenging things in this life is waiting. Waiting is tough for most people and even for me. I am yet to find a person who enjoys waiting. Most of us endure waiting and if it was left for us, we would get everything we desire instantly. Waiting is a tough call for most people. Part of the reason is the society in which we live in. We live in a society where people make a big deal about the idea of speed. We want things fast, we want things instantly. So we have things like instant tea, instant coffee, we have high-speed internet, because we, are, we really like the idea of things that are fast. This also combines with our fallen nature. As human beings, we are impatient by nature, although some of us are more impatient than others. We want tomorrow's things yesterday and next week's things this week. We are very impatient as a human race. But waiting is a part and parcel of life. While there are many things that we can fast track and be able to do faster, there are things there is nothing we can do but simply wait. For example, a farmer. A farmer, after planting his, his seed, there is nothing much they can do except to wait for the harvest. Think about an expectant mother. However much you may be excited about uh, having a new baby, once the conception has begun, they have to wait for about nine months. In between, they simply have to wait. In our everyday life, we always wait. We wait for food to get ready. We wait at the bank to be served. We wait at the airport to board a plane. We wait for exam results. We wait for marriage partners. We wait for medical test results. We wait for answer to prayer. Waiting is simply a fact of life. Even now, as we speak in this season, with regard to COVID-19, we are waiting as Kenyans for the night curfew to be lifted. We are waiting for church services to resume fully. We are, of course, waiting for a vaccine for this deadly virus. The point is, we simply have to wait in a number of issues. Waiting is part of past part and parcel of life. And so this morning as we share, I wonder what you are waiting for as a person. Some of us could be waiting for a salary at the end of the month or waiting for some payment for a business that you have done. Some of us have been praying and waiting for healing. Others are waiting for a marriage partner. Others are waiting for a result of, a result of an interview you attended recently. We are all waiters in a sense. We are all wait for something from time to time. What are you waiting for this moment, in this season of your life? We are all have to wait from time to time. But what I want to share with us is that this waiting is not bad news altogether. Waiting is actually good for us. In fact, the Bible records of several instances and biblical heroes who waited on God. Abraham waiting on God. Hannah waited on God. David waiting on God. Noah waited. And what we see is that at the end of their waiting, 
we find that their lives turn out for the better. We find God vindicating them because they have waited and waited patiently. And so this morning, we want to share just two things. What are the benefits of waiting and how do we wait well? What are the benefits of waiting and how do we wait well? The first question is, why is waiting important? Why is waiting good for us? What are the benefits of waiting? I want to share with you three things about why waiting is important. Number one, while we wait, the spiritual fruit of patience is developing in us. While we wait, the spiritual fruit of patience is developing in us. One of the fruit of the Holy Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, is patience. Now, as human beings, we are not born patient. The Holy Spirit has to cultivate this fruit in our lives as we continue to journey with God. We all desire to be patient people, but we have to learn to be patient. We are not born patient. In fact, there is a joke that says that a person went to pray and telling God, Lord, give me patience and give it to me right now. You can see that this is not something that is natural for us. It is a fruit that is cultivated in our lives by the Holy Spirit. Simply put, we learn patience by waiting. God often works patience in us by putting us in situations where we have to wait. And as we wait and we struggle with waiting, God is slowly working in us and developing the fruit of patience in our lives. Next time you find you are caught up in a jam, and you feel like overlapping and cursing the guy in front of you, just think about the truth and the idea that God is doing something in your life, helping you and growing and developing the fruit of patience in our lives. And therefore, the first thing is that when we wait, as we wait, God is at work in our lives, developing the fruit of patience. But number two, while we wait, our faith is growing and maturing. You see, our faith is strengthened as we wait. That's what we see in the book of Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, the passage that we read. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. As we wait, our spiritual muscles are strengthened. Our faith grows. Our, the, the period of waiting is often a period when God stretches our faith. And God uses the waiting time to be able to deepen our trust in him. Someone has said that waiting is the pathway to strong faith. So waiting is important. As we wait, our faith is growing and is maturing. But number three, the third reason why waiting is good for us is that while we wait, we are being prepared by God. God often uses the time of waiting to make us ready for the very things we are trusting him for. This waiting period can be seen as a preparation time to make us ready for the very things that we are believing God, to make us ready for the very things that God has promised us, to make us ready to be able to get into that position where we can receive the things that we are trusting God for. We see this uh, truth highlighted and illustrated in two biblical characters. The first one is David. David, as you all know, was anointed king as a young man. He was in his teens. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 13, records the instance where the prophet Samuel has gone to Bethlehem to anoint David as the next king of Israel while Saul is still alive. But the Bible shows us that David had to wait for many, many years before ascending to the throne of Judah. He had even to wait seven years longer to become king of the United Kingdom of Israel. We see that in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 3 to 4. So these years, from the time the prophet Samuel anointed David to the time he becomes king of Judah and then eventually the king of Israel, those were waiting years, but they were not lost years. Those were years that God was using that experience to prepare David to be the king of Israel. And when he finally became the king of Israel, you know how he was one of the most excellent kings that Israel has ever had to date. That was a preparation time for David. We also look at the life of Joseph. 
When Joseph saw his dream, which he shared with his family, the Bible says he was 17 years. Genesis chapter 37, verse 5 and verse 9. It would take Joseph many, many years before his dream came to pass. Meanwhile, he went through a lot of challenges in between. He had to wait for many years. He became the prime minister in his 30s. We find that in Genesis chapter 41, verse 37 to 44, when his dream of being a ruler comes to pass. But he had to wait for many, many years. Throughout this period of waiting, God was preparing him for the position that God had shown him in a dream. We see then that waiting is a time for preparation. Most people, when they get a glimpse of what God is doing in their lives, or where God is taking them, or when they get a, a dream of where God is showing them, they want to, the following day, they want to get there. But God does not work like that. There is always the, a period between the word and the fulfillment of the word. In that time, God is working in us, preparing us for where he wants us to be. At the time of David's anointing, at the time of Joseph's dream, both of them were simply not ready for the job. And as someone has said, sometimes the thing hasn't come yet because we are not ready. We can use our seasons of waiting to prepare us as best as we can for what is coming. So we have established two things. Number one, waiting is given. It is a fact of life. In fact, even God waits for us to come to him. But number two, we have also established that waiting has benefits. As we wait, something positive is happening in our lives. God is at work, but in hidden, in hidden but powerful ways to accomplish his purposes in life. And what are these purposes? As we have seen, number one, to mature us. Number two, to prepare us. And number three, to develop in us the spiritual fruit of patience. So waiting can be a good thing. But I would like us to know these benefits of waiting do not come to us automatically. How we wait matters. Because there are poor waiters and good waiters. There are those who do not wait in the right sense, and there are those who wait in the right sense. And this is what we want to explore. How do we wait? While we are waiting, as all these things are happening in our lives, how do we wait? Because how we wait determines the benefits we receive from this waiting period. Allow me to share with you three things about how we should wait. Number one, as you wait, you need to watch your attitude. As you wait, you need to watch your attitude. Our attitude as we wait for what God has promised us is as important as what we are waiting for. When we are trusting God for something, how we wait, our attitude as we wait, is just as important as the very thing we are trusting God for. Why is this important? This is important because the waiting zone or the waiting room is a fertile ground for grumbling, for murmuring, and for complaining. One of the best illustrations of how waiting can sour your spirit is the story of the Israelites. We find that when God takes them out of Egypt, it takes a long time, 40 years, for them to be able to get to the, to the promised land. During that time, it appeared to them that God had forgotten them. It looked to them that they were just wandering aimlessly in the desert. And they went through challenging experiences. And what came out of them is mama complaint and a spirit of dissatisfaction with the situation they were going through. Like the Israelites, we can grow bitter and even give up when answers to our prayers do not come as we imagined. You know, we all have this uh, in our minds, this picture of how God is supposed to do things, how he's supposed to organize this, and we have this mental image of how God is supposed to work in response to our desires and prayers. But God often does not work within our timelines. And when we, our timeline does not match with God's timeline, often we begin to be bitter, we begin to complain, oh, God has abandoned me, God has left me. Yet, God is at work, as we have seen in that season. And as we wait, Remaining positive and optimistic 
is the thing that will help us to wait in God's way. Because the Bible urges us to wait and wait patiently. Psalms chapter 27, verse 14, the Bible says, Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart, and wait for the Lord. So our attitude as we wait is important. How are you waiting, brother? How are you waiting, sister? Whatever it is that you are waiting for. Are you waiting in complaint? Are you waiting in murmuring? Are you waiting in grumbling? Are you waiting with the spirit of dissatisfaction? Or are you strong as you wait, as the Bible says? Are you taking heart as you wait for the Lord? Because God would like to, us to learn to wait in the right way. You see, life is not necessarily about how fast you get to the destination, but it's about how you make the journey. The most important thing as we go through life and as we pursue the things that God has called us to do and as we pursue the things we believe God wants us to have is not what you are achieving and accumulating, but the kind of person you are becoming. God is as interested in the process as he is in the product. Most of us, on the other hand, are more interested in the product. But God wants to walk with us in the process so that when we get to the product, we are the kind of people that he wanted us to be. And so the question I pose to you this morning, we are all waiters. We wait for things. We wait for many things. But what kind of person are you becoming as you wait? Are you becoming more bitter? Are you becoming more uh, negative? Or are, are you growing, uh, becoming a winsome, pleasant uh, man of faith, woman of faith that God desires us to be? The first challenge I throw to us, myself included, is as we wait, what is our attitude? And we need to watch our attitude as we wait because if we wait with a wrong attitude, we may end up waiting for a long time because God wants to shape us to be the kind of people he wants us to be. But number two, as you wait, beware of shortcuts. As we wait, beware of shortcuts. Someone has said this, beware of shortcuts, the devil usually prefers them. Often as we wait, we are tempted to help God. Because when we think God has taken too long, we feel that we want to play a part in quickening and fast-tracking what we believe we should be having by now. But I want to let you know that God is not a God of shortcuts. He is a God of the right paths. And it may take time before what he promises come to pass, but he is surely always on his timing. You see, shortcuts may well appear to be working in the short run, but in the long run, they are almost always worse. And therefore, the Bible encourages us not to be a people who like shortcuts, but people who wait on the Lord and on the timing of the Lord. Because when we take shortcuts, there are consequences that may not be as pleasant as we imagined. Allow me to give you two examples. Number one is the example of Abraham and Sarah. We see this story in the book of Genesis chapter 16. When God uh, has promised Abraham that he will get a, a, a son by the name of Isaac, but God speaks to Abraham at age 75, and the years come and the years roll by, and there is no son that God promised. And it appears at some point that Abraham is waiting and is wondering, will this thing come to pass? Sarah eventually gives up and says, Abraham, see, we have to do something about this thing that God promised. So he, she hatches a plan of uh, getting Hagar, her servant maid, to come and sleep with Abraham to get a child and therefore become parents through uh, Hagar's baby. Now, of course, we know what happened. Abraham slept with Hagar, and Hagar became pregnant. But we notice that that was not a good move, because immediately Hagar becomes pregnant, trouble begins in Abraham's household. Let's pick the reading from verse 6 of, uh, of, of Genesis chapter 16. Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, had bought him no children. But she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abraham, The Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. Perhaps I could build a family through her. Abraham agreed to what Sarai said. So after Abraham had been living in Canaan ten years, Sarai, his wife, took her Egyptian slave, Hagar, and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar, and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant... She began to despise her mistress. 
And we know where the story goes and how the story ends, Aga being kicked out of Abraham's family and the rivalry between uh, Ishmael and, uh, and Isaac that continues for generations to come. It is about helping God, taking a shortcut. Sarah was saying, this plan of God, I, I mean, Hagar was saying, uh, sorry, Sarah was saying, this plan of God was taking too much time. Let us help God to, con to fulfill his dream. Every time we take a shortcut, thinking that God has delayed, we discover that our way is not better than God's way. Actually, we discover it would have been better if we waited on God's plan and God's timing than a, a shortcut. But every time we have to wait, there is a great temptation for us to take a shortcut to reduce the time of waiting. But that may not be God's idea and God's agenda for us. But I like the story of David. This is a man who waited well. As we saw earlier, David is anointed king at age 16. And uh, he knows he will be the king of Israel. God has already pro uh, you know, uh, made this pronouncement, and it is just a matter of time. But what is amazing is that David had opportunities to be able to reduce the time of waiting, as it were, and ascend to the throne much earlier. In two instances, David had a chance to kill Saul and take over the kingdom. 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 3 to 7, Saul is uh, going to leave himself in a cave. David and his men are hidden there. He could have just killed him, and that was the end of him, and then become king. 1 Samuel chapter 26, verse 9 to 11, David and his three and his men, lieutenants, they go to uh, where David is, Saul is camping. Saul is in a deep sleep, and David goes there to the camp. And Abishai, one of David's lieutenants, tells him, this is the time the Lord spoke to you about. If you don't want to do it, I can do it myself. I am going to pin him down with a javelin. And he says, I will not repeat. It will just be once. And that will be the end of Saul. But David refused. He waited for God's timing. Look at what the Bible said in verse, in verse 9 to 11 of 1 Samuel chapter 26. David responding to Abishai says like this, Don't destroy him. Who can lay a hand on the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? As surely as the Lord lives, the Lord himself will strike him. Either his time will come and he will die, or he will go into battle and perish. But the Lord forbid that I should lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. This is, this is amazing. If it were many of us, we have this chance, the man who is standing on the way to your promotion, the person who is seeking to end your life, you are already a king in waiting. It's just a matter of time. And the king, the person who is standing for you is before you now for you to finish them. I can tell you most of us would have finished off Saul, but not David. He knew the secret of waiting on God's timing. And he waited until Saul died in his own way, and then he ascended to the throne. This is a challenge to me, and I hope it's a challenge to you. What is it that you know God has spoken to you about, but that seems to be taking too long? Are you feeling like taking a shortcut to that destiny that you feel God has drawn you to? Maybe you left college and it has taken several years and you have not gotten a job. Now when a job offer comes and the person is offering the job but it requires you to give a bribe or to do something that you know is against your faith, will you take that shortcut or will you continue waiting on God? Maybe you are a sister. You have been waiting on the Lord for many years and it looks like the brothers are not coming. All the other sisters are receiving visitations, but you, you are not receiving. And you are wondering, Lord, have you forgotten me? And then this non-believing gentleman comes, and he has all that you have been looking for, except that he has not, doesn't have a personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you take that offer, or will you continue waiting on God? Maybe you are a, an uprising minister. You are a gifted singer or a gifted preacher. And you are serving under a pastor or you are serving under another leader in the church. But you feel that 
you are being pressed down. You feel like you cannot wait for time. You, you want to, you, you feel like you are burning with anointing. You cannot wait before you are able to get a chance to serve, maybe as a pastor in your own church or with other people. You feel that you want to, you want to get on to that place right now. You can't wait. You can't humble yourself and serve along with a man of God, a woman of God that God has put over you for now. Many, many young ministers are destroyed because they don't have the patience to wait as God prepares them for what God has called them. I want to let us know we should wait and be patient and we should beware of shortcuts. As we said, the devil usually, usually prefers them. Instead of taking shortcuts, the Bible exhorts us to wait patiently for the Lord as we saw in Psalm chapter 27 verse 14. Wait patiently for the Lord. But the third way the Bible encourages us to wait, we are to wait as we watch our attitudes, we are to wait and avoid shortcuts. But thirdly and lastly, as you wait, do so expectantly. As you wait, do so expectantly. Psalms chapter 5, verse 3. Psalms chapter 5 and verse number 3. Waiting patiently. Psalm chapter 5, verse 3. The Bible says, In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I lay my request before you and wait expectantly or and wait in expectation. Brothers and sisters, biblical waiting is not a passive thing, folding of hands as you hope for the best. No. As we wait biblically, we are waiting with expectation. We are waiting with eagerness. We are waiting with faith. We are believing God because the Bible says God is faithful and is able to bring what he has uh, for what he has uh, pro uh, promised to us. He is faithful and able to bring it to accomplishment. So when God promises something and we wait, we are not waiting out of giving up. We wait in expectation. As the psalmist says, I wait expectantly uh, for the Lord. Therefore, waiting expectantly is about proactively and prayerfully refusing to give up even when what we expect takes time to manifest, as it often, it often happens. Again, Romans chapter 8, verse 25, talks about waiting expectantly. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 25. We can begin from verse 24. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. For hopes for who hopes for what is already, what he already has? Verse 25. But if we wait, or if we hope for what we do not have, we wait for it patiently. We wait for it expectantly. So, waiting expectantly is waiting with anticipation, is waiting with trust, is waiting with, uh, with anticipation that what God has said, he will be able to accomplish. It does not quit this kind of faith, but lays hold of God's promise, even if it takes, it takes long time to, to pass. It says that delay is not necessarily denial. It is the kind of waiting that is assured that God's timing is the best. How are you waiting? Have you given up of that hope? Have you given up of that desire? Have you given up of that dream? Or are you waiting with eagerness? The thing about waiting is that the first time God drops a dream or a vision or a promise into our lives or our hearts, we are expectant, we are eager, we are ready for it. Our faith is soaring. But as time goes by, and days turn to weeks, and weeks turn to months, and months into years, we can begin to give up and lose heart and give up hope. But the psalmist says, no, I wait expectantly for the Lord. However long it takes, I wait with expectation. I wait with eagerness. I wait with trust, believing that he who has promised is faithful to bring it to accomplishment. Brothers and sisters, there is a way we can wait that is better than just resigning and folding of hands and saying, what, let whatever happen, happen. Whatever comes, let it come. No, we wait with expectation because we know in him in whom we have believed. In conclusion, 
I want to say, it is true that not all the things we wait for we will get on this side of eternity. We live in a world where not all our hopes and aspirations will be met, will be fulfilled. Some answers to our prayers lie beyond our lifetime, and some are even found in eternity. In such a case, somebody may say, but why is the waiting anyway? If I'm not going to receive it eventually, why did I have to wait for it? But I want to repeat, some of the answers to our prayers lie beyond our lifetime. They will be manifested long after we exit the scene, but they will still be there anyway. But even some are found in eternity. But even if we don't see the results of our waiting while we are here, I believe it is still worth the wait. For as we wait, we discover that we are not alone, but we are in the company of a God who also waits. God waits. And as we wait, he waits with us for the timing so that we are able to align ourselves with God's timing and God's purpose. I wonder what you have been waiting for. I wonder how you have been waiting as a person. I wonder the issues that you have been going through as you have been waiting in this time of COVID-19. Maybe your business, you are waiting for it to pick up. Maybe the children are waiting now for schools to resume and students are waiting for colleges to resume. Maybe you are waiting for a job to, to, to the, you, you have a job, you are waiting for a job, but it has been postponed until after COVID-19. And you can come down with the spirit of grumbling and murmuring and giving up. This word is for all of us at this season. Waiting is part and parcel of God's dealings with us. In the school of God, one of the classes, one of the units we must cover is learning to wait. Because waiting is good for us. As we wait, God is doing an amazing work in our lives. He is refining us. He is pruning us. He is shaping our character. He is building us up. We are better for waiting than if we had decided not to wait. May God help us to develop a fruit, the fruit of the spirit of patience as we wait. So I want to challenge you today. How are you waiting? Remember, our topic is while you are waiting. So how are you waiting today? Whatever it is you are waiting for, I just want you to know that how you wait is as important as what you are waiting for. May the Lord give you patience. May the Lord give you the faith that will not give up even as you wait. Let us close with a word of prayer. I want to pray for two groups of people. Number one, I want to pray for patient for those who are waiting for something at this time and you feel that time is running out and God has delayed. What we need is patience. I'm also going to pray that God will transform our attitudes as we wait because we see that our attitude as we are waiting is important. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you are a God who waits with us. And Lord, there are many of your people who are watching this uh, online message and they are waiting for one thing or the other. I want to pray that, Lord, as we wait and as they wait, you will pour out in them an attitude of patience and perseverance, that, Lord, they will not go for the shortcuts that the devil opens before them, but they will wait until what you have fulfilled, the real and the genuine blessing of God, they will wait for it until it comes. Father, we pray for the fruit of, of patience, that, Lord, you will continue to work this fruit in us, that we will be a waiting people, a patient people. People can wait, as the Bible says, for as we wait, our strength is renewed. I also pray, Lord, for, 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 for those of us who we have, in this period of waiting, Lord, our spirits are low, and, and we have feeling like giving up, and we are feeling like just uh, throwing in the towel. I pray that, Lord, faith will arise in them, that as they wait, their faith will rise. And once again, Lord, they will believe because believing in you who is trustworthy, we will never be put to shame. Bible says that those who wait upon the Lord, they shall not be put to shame. So Lord, I pray that none of them will be put to shame as they continue to wait for you and wait on what you have put in store for them. We thank you and we bless you. May you be with us, Lord, as we go into this week, as we continue our pursuits of life. Help us to learn to wait. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and uh, as you continue to wait. Amen. Thank you very much.